let's do this physics problem. So this is one that I made myself, but there's a lot like that that are very similar. Uh, here's the story. A plane is flying this way with some velocity, and it's carrying a package. See, there's the package right there. And they want to drop the package so that it arrives at this person down on the ground. So the question is, if we know the velocity V is 56 meters per second uh, in the horizontal direction, the height is 35 meters. And the question is, how uh, far before they get to the person should they release the package? I think the first thing that you should think about is, what's the package going to do? Once it lets go, it has this velocity in the horizontal direction, and it will go like this. Like that, a parabola. Uh, I think it's very common for people to think that it just moves at an angle like that, but it doesn't. Remember, because once it's released, it will have the downward gravitational force acting on it, and that's it, assuming there's no air resistance. So that means it's projectile motion. It's projectile motion with initial y velocity equal to zero, initial x velocity equal to v zero, whatever that is, right? So we have your normal uh, projectile motion problem. So let's let's solve our normal projectile motion problem. Uh, I'm actually going to do this in Python too because I want to, and no one can stop me. So in projectile motion, the most important thing is to break the problem into two pieces. I can say I can deal with this is my x. Actually, let's call this my x, my origin right there. That's x equals 0, and this is the x direction. That way, I can say in my x motion, motion, I have the following. x, I'm going to call it the initial x. x1 is 0 meters. x2 is x meters, which we don't know, right? I'm, I don't, I'm trying to find that. And since the only force is in the y direction, the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So I can write the following kinematic equation. x2 equals x1 plus vx, it doesn't matter if I call it one or whatever, delta t. All right? This comes from the definition of average velocity. This is if I know the x velocity, which I do, uh, and I know the starting location, which I do, uh, and I know the time, which I don't, I can find the final position. So I'm trying to find this final position so I know where to release the, the package from, but I don't know the time. So I can use the y motion to find that. So the key with projectile motion is that we have a one-dimensional motion in the x direction and a one-dimensional motion in the y direction, and they are independent except for the time. So the time it takes for this to move in the vertical direction is the same time it takes to move in the horizontal direction. So if I find the time from here, I can use that over here. So let's write down what we know. I know y1, the initial y, is I'll just call that h, right, 35 meters. The final y, y2, is zero. It ends up at the ground. The initial y velocity, I'll call that vy1, is equal to zero meters per second. Because initially the ball is not moving in the up or down direction, it's launched horizontally. It's just dropped as it's moving. It's dropped, released from rest. So the initial y velocity is zero. Um, and and I, that's all I need to solve for the time, because I can say uh, y2 equals y1 plus vy1 delta t plus, it's actually minus, minus one half g delta t squared, where g is the y component, negative g is the y component of the acceleration due to the gravitational force mg. Uh, so this is just the kinematic, one of the kinematic equations. Uh, I don't want, really want to derive that again. I've done it before. But so now let's just put, plug in what we know. I know the final y is zero, and I know this, y, this term is zero. So that makes it a little bit easier. I get y1 equals, let's see, actually, I get 0 equals y1 minus 1 half g delta t squared. I can add this term to both sides, and I get 1 half g delta t squared equals y1. I can multiply both sides by 2 and divide by g, and I get t equals the square root of 2, and y1 is h. I'm going to put in that. So I get 2 h over g. And let's just double check real quick. Remember, g has units of meters per second squared, and that's meters. So I get meters 
divided by meters, those cancel, and then I get one over one over seconds squared is second squared. And I take the square root, I get seconds. So this gives me the right units, okay? But now I can take that and put it up here. So now I can say x2 equals x1, which is zero, plus vx, which is just that, I'll just call it vx, times delta t, which is this, square root of two h over g. Okay, so we're gonna put in my numbers. I'm gonna do that uh, in Python because I don't, well, okay, here's my calculator. I'll do it because you asked nicely. So let's put in our values. My velocity is 56 times uh, the square root. I'm not good with calculators. There it is. Square root of two times h of 35 divided by 9.8. And, and remember, g is 9.8. I've already taken into account the negative sign. I messed up. Okay, v is 56 times the square root, and I think I have to do parentheses, 2 times h of 35 divided by 9.8, close parentheses, and I get error. That's weird. This is what you get for using a calculator. Oh, times, times. Okay, let's clear one more time, clear. So 56 times the square root. Oh, let's see why. I did the wrong button. The square root, and I put the parentheses. Two times 35 divided by 9.8, close parentheses, enter. 149.6. So that's how far before the drop point you have to get. Now, I actually had another question that says, what was the final velocity? So V2, it's going to be, right before it hits the ground, it's going to be uh, Vx, Vy2, 0, right? It's a, it's a vector. I already know the x component. So the y component I can get from the following kinematic equation. Vy2 equals Vy1 minus g delta t. That comes from the definition of the acceleration, which is negative g. Well, I already know t and I already know g. So this is just going to be um, negative g times the square root of 2h over g. And you can put in, you can cancel that if you want to. There, you'll be the g on the top, but I don't really care. Okay, so let's just put that in right here. And I'll say g of 9.8 times square root 2 times 35 divided by 9.8 equals negative 26.1. 26.2. So that's my total velocity. V2, right before it hits the ground, is going to be 56, negative 26.2, zero meters per second. Okay, now let's do this in Python because I want to. And you can't stop me. Okay, so switching here. This is really just for fun, right? Let's animate this in Python, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do as much as I want um, because, like I said, it's fun. Uh, so I'm gonna start off with some things here. Let's put g, oops, uh, oops, g equals vector zero negative nine point eight zero. Um, let's see, is that big enough? There. And I need to put my other parameters. Let's say v zero equals fifty six h equals 35 um, and I'm going to go ahead and put my my x value I'm going to call it xr for the range is 149.6 and that's just going to be used by me to kind of set things up okay I want to make four objects I'm going to make the ground the person the plane and the package okay so let's make the ground first um, and so I, how, if you want to map this out I want it to end up at one side at, at 149.6. Um, I could put the origin, let's just do it like this. Let's say ground equals box. Uh, the position is gonna be equal to uh, at the origin. And this is actually wrong because, um, because the thickness will extend beyond what I want, but I, I think it'll work out fine, zero, zero, zero. Now for the size, uh, I, in the in we can give it the x y and z 
length of the box. So the x-coordinate, if I put it at 149, then um, let's put it at 200. So 200 for the x. The y-coordinate is going to be the, the distance that much. Um, let's put that at maybe just one meter. And then the z, which would be back and forth into the thing, let's put that at 10. Uh, and, and let's give it a color of green. And then let's run that and see what that looks like. Okay, so there's my ground. That's good enough. Okay, now I'm going to make my um, my plane. Let's just call it that. And it's a, it's a sphere, spherical plane, right? Because because it's easier. And I'm going to start it at, let's start it at um, negative, x equals negative 200. So I'm going to say a negative 100. The length of that whole thing is 200. So the position is going to be the vector um, negative 100 h, right? Cause it's going to start at h above and then uh, 0. Now the radius, if I put it at, one meter it will be oh pretty big let's put it let's give it a two meter radius uh and let's make it yellow and let's make it uh have a trail make trail equals true and let's run that and i made a, i made an error plane pos vector oh i have two commas that's my fault comma comma you should have called me this is your job. Okay, so there's my plane. Pretty cool. Uh, let's make the package now. Uh, let's say, let's call it package. Uh, it's a sphere. Its position is also the same thing. It's in the same, it's the same as the, the plane. And the radius, it should be a little bit smaller. Let's make its radius uh, one. Let's make it one and, and make it cyan. Color equals color dot cyan and make trail equals true not trial trail equals true um now you're not gonna be able to see it because it's gonna be inside the plane so i'm not even gonna run it uh and then finally let's make the person uh is equal to a sphere uh the position they're going to be on the ground which is partially underground because the ground is a meter thick so that's like uh the distance from one the middle of the box up is half a meter uh, but let's just put the position at vector so it's going to be negative 100 right because that's where the plane started plus xr so that means i'm going to start where the plane is and move it ahead xr and then zero zero and for the radius let's put the radius at uh 1.5 and let's just leave the color alone and there's an error Package is a reserved word. Okay, cool, cool. Um, let's say thing. How about that? Is thing a reserved word? I don't think so. Okay, so there's my person down there. I can make them a little bit bigger. Let's just make them the same size as the plane. And you'll see that they do extend through the thing, but that's fine. I don't want. I don't really want to make a fuss of the whole thing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, give some properties to the package and the plane. Um, that I don't I can add on to. So watch this. Plane dot v equals vector uh, v zero zero zero, and then thing dot v equals plane dot v. Now time t equals zero dt equals zero point zero one. I'm going to use my normal numerical calculation. So I'm going to break this problem into pieces. And e during each piece, I can kind of assume a constant acceleration, which it is, and a constant velocity, which it's not, but it'll still work. Okay, so I'm going to say while plane.pos.x is less than person.pos.x. Let's just try that. And now I need this rate statement. Uh, it says don't do more than 100 calculations per second, so it'll run in real time. Now I'm going to update the velocity, I don't need to do that, they're both moving at constant velocity. I'm gonna update the position. So plane.pos equals plane.pos plus plane.v times vt. Uh, thing.pos equals thing.pos plus thing.v times dt, and then update time, t equals t 
plus dt. And I think that should work. I didn't even save this. Okay, so now they're both moving along the same path because I never dropped. I never dropped the package. Now to drop the package, I just need to give it an acceleration, so which is negative g. So up here, I'm going to say thing dot v equals thing dot v minus uh, plus g times dt because g is the acceleration. I already got a nine negative nine point eight in there. So the velocity is going to change each time. And now let's run it, and let's see what happens. I dropped it. And it's going to hit. Is it going to hit? It's going to hit. Boom. There you go. And you can make a graph of this and everything, but I don't know. I just like that a lot. I'm pretty happy with that. So there you can see that it is a parabola. It is projectile motion. I use the acceleration of projectile motion. The plane keeps moving at a constant speed. Uh, you could do something fun like say, what if I launch it up? Uh, it's going to miss, right? I could go over here, thing.v equals this, let's say, vector uh, v0, uh, 10, 0. So now it's going to be launched with some upwards velocity too. And so it actually goes up, but now it's not going to end up at the same part because it's going to be in the air for a longer time. It's going to land too far, but it's going to stop. It missed by a lot. There you go. Okay, so put that back down to 0, and it'll work. Save the code, and I'll link the code down below. So I hope you enjoyed that. Well, I did, right? And that's all that really matters.